I've not seen the whole show, but uh, it was NXT 2.0, everybody. They're building up to Survivor Series. Should I go over some, some details here or not bother? Sure. I mean, there's a couple of things that were of note. So uh, first off, we had uh, Tommaso Ciampa beating Grayson Waller. This is actually a pretty good match. Things started out all right. Then we had some brawls with L.A. Knight and Grayson Waller, and uh, Cameron Grimes came out. And my God, we had this segment backstage. I don't want to make fun of the people involved because this is just their job and what they're told to do, but watch the, the segment backstage with Toxic Attraction and Dakota Kai and Kaylee Ray. It's the most unintentionally hilarious, horrible segment you've ever seen in your life. Just the bottom of the barrel acting and reactions and nothing that any normal human beings would ever do in any scenario in like multiple universes. Like if there's a billion universes, you'd never find a universe where like normal people actually did what was happening in this segment right here. Well, in that case, that they let the camera linger for a really long time. Of course they did. It's toxic attraction. You know how it works. We got to just look at them for a long time. They announced that uh, Cameron Grimes got his hair cut and his beard trimmed last week on the show. Oh, the boogeyman. And uh, I One actually... step closer. You know what's funny is he looks way better with the trim. His, <laughs> his hair is like shoulder length now. Oh Before it was God. like, you know, down to his, his buttocks. And his, his beard was out of control, but now it's trimmed. So he actually Crystal looks Gale. better now. But he's still feuding with the, the poker player. And they have agreed that at the pay-per-view, they're going to have a uh, hair match. (laughs) And so everyone is expecting that they're going to shave uh, Cameron Grimes' Uh. head. And they may, because it's WWE. Oh, the Boogeyman going to be sad if they they shave the Boogeyman's head against number one Paul Jones. What's this guy's name? What's it? Number one Duke Hudson. I've been wrong before, everybody. Okay. (laughs) But I believe that Cameron Grimes is going to win this match. And they're just going to shave Duke Hudson's head. Because he, he barely got no hair anyway. It'll take two months to grow that back. So then they're I going think to put Big Mama's hair on the line. He's going to be a, he's going to be a pool player because he's going to be a cue ball. He's Jimmy Valiant. He's there. You know, even a good dad he joke. survived. No he's the only thing that has survived eras now has been Cameron Grimes. And let me tell you this. If you think I'm making fun of this man, you're a liar and a fool and don't listen to this show. Love this guy. But I said they've turned him into their version of the boogie woogie man, Jimmy Valiant. And I'll be damned if he has actually gone from one regime to another and actually remained untouched for the most part. Good for you. God bless. We had Casey Canzaro and Kane Carter versus Indy Hartwell and Persia Parada. And I don't like to make fun of people. I do make fun of them, but I don't like to. Oh, yeah. And part of the problem is that if this were just an indie show, I mean, I'd probably just disregard it. But the show's on national television. And, my God, this match. Oh, my Lord in heaven. So, Indy Hartwell is all upset because Dexter got his hand broken by the heels. Now he can't paint. That's what he loves to do, is art. So, she's all she's all sad about this. And so, like, with all due respect, Indy is already... I mean, she's not good in the ring at all. So now she has to go out there and pretend like she's disinterested. If you can even imagine this, this match was so bad. And she got pinned by Casey. There was some distraction or something. It was so bad. Santos Escobar beat Malik Blade. It was just a quick little deal right there. We had uh, Cora Jade and Mandy Rose. So, you know, I talked about this. The lip service. We want young, attractive women. We want to push them. We know that everyone's too old. We only want to hire young people. We know you guys want young people. Well, they got Cora Jade here. She's 20. Really cute. So what do they do? Well, a couple weeks ago, they they beat her like a drum in a squash match. Now she goes in here with Mandy Rose, and you'll never guess what happens. Mandy Rose destroys her. I don't know how long this match went, but if it went five minutes, she destroyed her for four minutes and 55 seconds. And then you'll never guess there was a distraction. She was rolled up and pinned, and then Cora Jade fled like a coward. This is their, we got to push young talent. 
This is their idea to get over young Cora Jade. They had an MSK segment. They're looking for the shaman, but they're carrying a bag, which we're supposed to think has like drugs in it. And they get pulled over by cops for going too slow. And they should have thrown the book at them for that. But they're about to, uh, the cop wants to see what's in the, the bag, and they're unzipping and all scared. But then some dude flies by, and the cop goes, ah, I got to get this guy. You guys are off the hook. So, of course, we're going to find out that, you know, the egg or something is in this bag, and not drugs. I don't know what it's going to be, but that was that. And we'll talk about Brooks Jensen and Josh Briggs. Team BJ after the break. Wrestling Observer Live. Is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Before I talk about Team BJ, I want to mention if you go to my Twitter right now, at Brian Alvarez, I have retweeted the link to the... Today, it's just the Whale Scout uh, fundraiser. You can go to eBay and find all of the uh, uh, co-hosting spots. Which, by the way, the final two co-hosting spots, it's going to be a three-day auction. I think we put it at seven days for the first two or five days or something like that. And it's like no one does anything until the last day anyway. So it'll be three days for the next two co-host auctions. Those are still up at, uh, go to eBay and type in Whale Scout and you can find it. Or I can retweet it later here. But the fundraiser side is a bunch of non-wrestling stuff. Holiday gifts for your friends and family. And I'm plugging it because today we're uh, focusing on the uh, Whale Scout hoodies. And we put it in order. One order. They should be here like any day now. And it's the only order. So check these hoodies out. We're plugging them today so they're going fast. If you want one, you got to get one like right now. And that's it. When they're gone, they're gone. And they're very, very cool hoodies. So check them out. The uh, little logo they've got there. Actually, it's a large logo on the back. Ah, missed a chance for uh, producer Jared to show off his skills right here. Throw one of those up there on the screen. I'm sure he can find it here. We'll, we'll put it up here after a while. But I'm sure he's busy looking for some something to put up when I talk about Team BJ here. So it is, uh, it's, uh, what's their names? Uh, Brooks Jensen and the yeah, other guy. I actually, actually missed something here. Ivy Nile squashed uh, Ulyssa Leone. I like her. Which actually was fun. It was a fun little squash match. And uh, the problem was, like, they just don't know how to get anybody over. I'm watching this match, and Ivy Nile, like, very quickly takes her down and puts her in, like, uh, uh, figure four head scissors on the mat. And then she starts doing sit-ups, and the crowd pops for the sit-ups. And so I thought, man, if, if she does those sit-ups and, and this uh, Ulyssa taps out and she's doing sit-ups, she'll be so over. But she didn't. And she did some more moves. And that was that. But anyway, I do like uh, Ivy Nile. And I think that the Diamond Mine, I think they're now baby faces. But I'm not sure. Because, you see, they're feuding with Joe Gacy, who is clearly a hated heel. Like, uh, hated enough that I don't want to watch him on my television. I just want to see if, like, football's on, and I don't watch football. But they're doing a, a cruiserweight match between Roderick Strong and Joe Gacy, even though Joe Gacy is uh, over the limit. But, you know, his gimmick is uh, this cruiserweight title by design is not inclusive. It sucks even worse than I'm explaining, if you actually watch it, everybody. Anyway, uh, Jensen and Briggs beat the Grizzled Young Vets, because of course they did. Uh, and like on a scale of 1 to 10, talent-wise, Grizzled Young Vets are like 10, and God bless these two, they're like maybe to 3. But that's what the show is. It's like all of the, the young people are going to beat the old people. Because you see, the idea here is we're trying to attract a young audience. Even though our average viewer, the median age is 62, which means of the 600,000 people that watch this show, 300,000 of them are over the age of 62. That's a large number. So it's a bunch of, of old men. And I say that as an old man myself, but I'm not that old. These old men are trying to create a show for young people. You know, this never works. They used to have this thing called the generation gap. Remember that term? The generation gap? Well, there's a gap between the generation of young people and the generation of old people. And so, like, these old people, they can't figure out up from down. How do we track young people? You know what we'll do? Well, every woman on the roster is now going to wear 50% less clothing. If you think I'm kidding, by the way, they've got a new character that's going to be debuting. I don't remember her name. But they have this vignette, and I am not making this up. She's playing tennis in a skirt 
She talks about how daddy pays for her tennis lessons. Daddy is paid for my tennis lessons. Daddy is the daddy deal. They literally, this thing is like 30 seconds long. They don't show one shot of her face. We don't even know what she looks like, like facially. It's all shots of her buttocks, her mammaries. What word do you want me to use? That's all it is. Not one shot of her face. And she talks about daddy paying for my tennis lessons. Daddy, this is this is the characters we've got here on uh, on NXT 2.0 to attract the youngsters. That's what we come up with here. Very progressive for the kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is basically out of silver spoons, or so I don't. The everything is rooted in something from 1984. So I, God knows, sounds uh, sounds pretty bad to be honest with you. You know what's really bad and offensive to me? Just looking at things on paper Here goes, what am I suggesting here? Suggesting? There's no suggestion whatsoever. It's exactly what it sounds like. Maybe I'm I'm wrong about this, but it seems on paper here the most offensive thing that came out of that show is the fact that War Games is a dangerous proposition for NXT talent on a regular basis anyway. But we're going to have a war games where they can't help themselves but to have people do crazy ass stunts. And, you know, when it's somebody like uh, Pat McAfee, you cringe, but you go, oh, well, okay. He's in there with Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly and this person and that person. And I don't know about Gigi Dolan and Raquel Gonzalez and Cora Jade. And, and I mean,. <laughs> Why they're going to be in a in a war games match? Grayson Waller, Tony D'Angelo, Tony D'Angelo. I know it's not like he hasn't he, he's just started wrestling, but in the grand scheme of things, he just started wrestling. Braun Breaker technically has just started wrestling. They're going to be in a war games match doing war game spots. I uh, when I don't mean just like running somebody's head into the fence. I mean flips from the corner and. All this other stuff, I just, it's a cringeworthy scenario you know, for me. cringeworthy is my life. I got all these people here mad at me for saying, Daddy. Like, it's my fault. I didn't come up with this stupid gimmick. I'm recapping their stupid gimmick, and now you're mad at me. So, uh, Blair from the Facts of Life or whatever, Rich chick this is now based on who is this person do, do we know who somebody they had are? her name way back here tiffany stratton that's what they put is on that, the screen apparently now that sounds like a great worked name for like a rich again stratton isn't that out of silver spoons tiffany uh a typical rich rich girl first name or at least the illusion of that okay so is that her that can't be her shoot name it's got to be her worked name right well, I'm sure it's the worked name. Well, they're given the they're given name? worked they're given different work names to refs. Well, it's like, well, who is oh. this person? Do they have a tennis background? How are they rooting this in, uh, uh, in anything here? This this Philip Frankelstein. I gotta change that guy's name. <laughs> this show is just this it just blows my mind. Like, what is happening? NXT 2.0. It's actually like it's kind of funny now. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm like, I hate watching it because it's bad, but I am entertained being able to recap it afterwards. And to be fair, I've not seen the main event, but it would be tough to have a difficult main or a bad main event when you've got uh, uh, Pete Dunn, Johnny Gargano, and Carmelo Hayes. Although uh, the person on the front page wrote, this was most likely the best match of the night. There wasn't much competition, I would think. <laughs> what could have possibly been. <laughs> Close to as good as this match. I mean, maybe the Champa opener, but that was like ninety percent Champa. Well, anyway, that's, let's so read. You let's read. It's ninety percent Champa. It's probably pretty good. Uh, Chris Aiken here, my old friend Chris Aiken. He's a good guy. But let's read his uh, his conclusion. Okay, let's see what he concluded about this show. He says the show was a mixed bag. There was some good, and there was equally some bad. It was clearly a developmental show. Nevertheless, built up war games. Some things on the show were cringe, while others were fun to watch. And I will say Cameron Grimes was awesome on the show, but he always is. The characters have little depth, 
Much like the concepts and the characters on the main roster. That's true. Old, tired ideas and concepts were rehashed into a more contemporary form. You could argue that, I guess. Some things should stay in the past. Correct. Let's move forward. It is not the 90s, yet this show felt very much like a 90s wrestling show at times. Gee, I wonder why. One guy's 76, the other guy's in his 60s. Shawn Michaels is in his mid-50s now. They're, they're in charge of a show where they want to attract a young audience. Whatever. I got more stuff I could talk about. We actually should go over the card for War Games because they actually do have a card for it. You ready? Yeah. Good, because i got to find it. Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, Pete Dunne, and L.A. Knight will face Braun Breaker, Carmelo Hayes, Grayson Waller, and Tony D'Angelo. That's the men's war games match. <laughs> I read that for the first time. You got my actual reaction right there. Women, Mandy, Gigi, JC, and Dakota... Against Io Shirai, Raquel, Cora Jade, and Kaylee Ray. Cameron Grimes, Duke Hudson, Hair versus Hair. Roderick Strong versus Joe Gacy for the Cruiserweight title. Which, by the way, uh, Roderick Strong was pinned last week by Odyssey Jones, who also is over the Cruiserweight limit, but somehow he's not in this Cruiserweight match. It's Joe Gacy. And we got Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner versus either Kyle O'Reilly and Von Wagner or Legato Del Fantasma. I hope Joe Gacy wins the title, and then Hachimura wins it back from him, and then Odyssey Jones goes, "Hey, wait a second! I'm supposed to be that chain." Then he challenges him. My God, this we could turn this into the overweight championship before you know it. You know, I gotta admit before we go to the break that I do love the name Von Wagner. That's a good one. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Again, maybe it's just that as a Canadian who has always had health insurance. This doesn't seem, Max, smart enough to this, be a big this deal. This is going to go to the best of right here, Lance. Yeah. You are being corralled away by uh, by this dog. By a dog trying to eat my wife's uh, boots. Oh, man. Oh, they said they must be tasty. Yeah, if my wife gets home and her good leather boots are chewed up, I'm dead. You'll be chewed up next. Yeah, I'll be living outside with the dog. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.